Hello there, my name is Shadron. Welcome to my channel, and welcome to the second episode of my Heroes Map Rank Three Fan Made Mod Town Debut Series. In this series, we will looking at a town design. That town's tier units comparing them with one of the nine non mod factions. Seeing how they stack up. Let's take, for example, the Rampart or the Wizard Town or the Barbarian Town or the Conflux, Castle Town, etc. These factions, not towns, I mean factions. When I say town, I mean faction, just so you know. I keep doing that for some reason. I'll also be showing these units in a battle, both unupgraded and upgraded so you can see how they look and how they act in battle in this episode we will look at the infamous cancer forts faction this faction was initially going to be the expansion town added in the armageddon's blade expansion before being more or less voted down by the bandom at large signing distaste at the town as replaced by conflex This mod fax is based on the public info for the town themselves and screenshots for the town layout. There will be a version that will be released in the future, a future update for the Week of God expansion mod pack, but that won't be for a while until then is what we have. I will put a link in the description of what was known about this faction, the info given, so you can have more of an in-depth idea what this fax is about. This is the forge fax on the outside. This castle looks pretty interesting. It looks, it stands out in the idea of heroes. It doesn't look really heroes-ish. I'll get more of that later on. But this looks pretty cool, actually. Very unique. And this is the inside. This is unbuilt, of course. Brand new town, brand new day, all that good stuff. This looks cool. I'm going to say that. This looks awesome. It's so dark and gloomy. It's, it's, it's been about the water kind of sloshing down here and the reflection of the water and just this moon in the background and everything. The past going up and down. It just looks really awesome. And this, I'm a moth to a light. I can't look away. I swear. It stands out so amazingly in this light here. This bright white light and this dark background. I love the way it kind of goes, oh, this thing goes up and has a point and goes up again. It looks very official, like, like a city center would look like. And while we're over here, like a motto at light, let me show you what this faction can build. Each faction has a unique building that it can make, that no one else can make. This one has two. Well, one, two, actually it is two unique buildings. Let's go through and I can show you which ones are unique here. Town halls, the same as everywhere else. Citadel, we have those everywhere else. Taverns, blacksmith, marketplace. The main skill is interesting. You can only build three levels. Every other faction has five levels. This one, three. It's interesting to note that one. The replicator. This is a unique thing here. It allows the replica artifacts. No other faction I know of has this. I put all the factions. Well, I don't play Complex very often, but I have played them a little bit. And they don't have this. Hero Teleporter. This ensures the presence of at least one forge here in the tavern. That's very interesting. Normally, when you go to hire a hero, you have to decide randomly. If you're in a rampart, you have to decide between a barbarian and a wizard hero. Which doesn't really work very well for morale. This guarantees the appearance of a forge hero in the tavern, allowing you to have that morale boost. Going down here, every faction has one building at least in their towns that allows production of a type of troop to be higher every week. Be it a griffin, or be it a dwarf, or be it etc. From each faction has at least one. This one has two. Both the turret and the arsenal. Turn is shield bearers, which is tier one. Arsenal, which is skill sky brawlers, which is tier six. I don't think any other faction has something like that. That has two of them in the same city or in the same faction. It's very interesting. 
Research tower is normal. Almost every single faction has one building that allows you a stall for a production or more gems one week or more crystals one week or whatever. They might all have one actually for all, for all I know. They think they all do all have one. But it's just the one gives you one silver each day. Down here is the buildings which allow trip production. As we all know that. But the thing they've just seen here is this. In Heroes 4, you happen to establish one of the other buildings. Just keeps the same idea. Where one of the other buildings, you can't have both. And with BAM, fully upgraded Forge Town. This looks pretty awesome. It really does. Here's the three levels of magic. You're going to get three levels. Which is about five. The background's, of course, a bit freaky because it's a you know, dark castle here. And that right there. I'm mean, standing like on this side of the, uh, like on this little side over here, looking out at the moon. It's pretty cool, actually. But, yeah. You can see these different things here. You can see this is, you know, the spikes here. They kept the idea of this going. A little building here. It's pretty awesome. You got a little ball that he use here. Very, very interesting overall. It's how they came up the end of this. We have reached a part of the video where I'm going to be showing you a battle from both unupgraded and upgraded lineup. Let's start with the unupgraded lineup. These sprites don't look bad at all. I gotta say that. Especially this guy right here. This guy freaks me out. I'm gonna say that right off the bat. This guy freaks me the hell out. It's like a nightmare creature. It really is. It is a crab, like a human crab monster thing. Not a human crab, but it's still quite a freaky bastard, more or less. This guy is also kind of a nightmare as well, but anyway. Let's hop in here. Let's start kind of start moving around. Let's go with haste on this guy here. Do -do -do -do. Dang. They are thick. 114 damage when two of them died. That is some nice stats right there. Bang. So that's one thing unique about this. No other faction has a gun or a bazooka. Huh. He's floating. So, I'm missing mods. Here's one. Unique backgrounds. This gives, this mod gives... 24, I believe it is, a new background to battle. It's quite nice. Ha! I guessed right. I know that guy's too well now. Unfortunately, these guys can't fight right now because they have no health in them. There's, no, there's only two of them, but you'll see them in a, you know, a better version fighting. Oh no. Oh no. Boys, Woo. that's a problem. Oh crap! Speed is not the highlight of this army at all.
Sorry about the silence. There's not much to say. Sorry about the silence. There's not much to say here. This is more kind of a watch and see this army in action more than describe anything. These poor guys, though. Man. Smack. Boo. Boo. I'm tempted, but I don't want to waste them. I need them to die on me. You know what? No. Oh my gosh, lordy. Would you freaking die already? Thank you. Man, those losses are not... Did I kill one of my walker guys? Holy crap, they got a walker guy. No way. There's no way. Oh my god. Never underestimate golems. Woohoo. And now time for an upgraded lineup fight. These are all fully upgraded. The sprites are a little bit different. They're not a lot different, but they are definitely noticeably different. These guys up here don't look much different, but you cut coming down to like into the Sky Knights and into the Bazookas and the Bloodsuckers here, the Soul Suckers. They definitely look different. So, same kind of idea. I'm gonna see real quickly. This thing is like a freaking nightmare. You will see this damn thing in the deepest abyss of your nightmares. It is the most OP Doom boss you're ever gonna see, as well. It breaks me the flip out. If I'm an archer, and I see this other gun on the fucking battlefield, I am gone. There are smoke trails where I used to be. This thing would scare the crap out of me, like nothing else does in the battlefields. Just imagine coming along this giant crab walking metal monster coming at you. You'll be shitting bricks. Christ. Ooh! Lucky, lucky, boom. Boom, boom. Man, that looks good. I'm not going to say that, though. This looks good. This game just looks really freaking awesome. I don't know. Oh, you can see these guys in action. They're kind of cool, actually. Pretty easy. You know what? Let's do another one. If you want to see these guys in action. Here, go. Let's see these guys in action here. They strike with three mouse. Three headed attack. That's a bit freaky. Listen to the walking sound. Freaky. Bitch, please. <laughs> Poor dwarves. We have now reached a part of the video where I'm going to be comparing the seven tier units against a non modded factions unit. I'm going to see immediately that this does not look good. I have a certain amount of room where I have to fit all four pictures in. To fit my video and it gets crowded to say the least it's legible but it's definitely not pretty starting with tier one we have the null and the no marauders versus the shield bearer and the payment bearers starting with a null we have attack three and a defense five 
versus two bears, attack two and defense five. Edge, null. Damage, two to three versus one to three. Again, null. Health, very small edge on the bears. Two bears. Speed is very slightly in the favor of the gnolls. Cost is very slightly in the favor of the gnolls. While the abilities is where the bears take the lead. Both immunity to the death cloud and a 50% chance to reduce physical damage from ranged or melee attacks. The bears with those abilities are a lot better. Going down to the Pavis Bears and the No Marauders. The attack and defense stay close. The Pavis Bears take a bit more defense edge, but lose an attack side. Damage is a death to cool. Health is slightly in the favor of the Pavis Bears, which does matter a lot in this fight. Speed, a death to cool, which does matter here. Cost, more for the Bears. But, again, the abilities come through. They have a same immunity to death cloud, but with an added 50% chance to reduce physical damage from ranged or melee attacks. The S is basically in the favor of the bearer. Tier 2. Lizard Man and Thugs vs. Lizard Warrior and Mercenaries. I know you can't see the Mercenary, this is one of these situations where I had too much on the screen to fit on it. So I had to make some sacrifices. But it is fully called a mercenary, I guarantee it. This one is hard to match as well because there's nothing in the game that's anywhere near a gun wielding thug like this. So I had to go by similar damage and similar stats. Or at least I thought at least to be similar enough. And obviously the tier as well. Either way. We have Lizard Man vs. Thug. We have Attack 5 to Attack 5. Defense 6 to Defense 5. Small edge on the Lizard Man. Damage is to the Thugs, which matters a lot. Health is the Thug. Speed is again the Thug. Cost per unit is tied. And shots aren't going to matter very much. They're tied. Victory, easily a Thug. What do you expect? They have guns. I mean, really. What do you expect there? Lizard Warrior versus Mercenary. Attack 6 to attack 8. Defense 8 to defense 6. That's interesting how they flip like that. Damage is slightly in the favor of Mercenaries. Both very slightly in the favor of Mercenary. Shots probably won't matter, but it's double for Lizard Warrior. Cost is a little bit less for the Lizard Warrior. That one might be maybe just maybe a Lizard Warrior fight. That would be a toss up, I would think. Definitely an interesting, you know, one on one fight to get into. Tier 3 Stone Golem versus Banner Cheaper, Iron Golem versus Cyborg. We have Attack 7 and Defense 10 versus 6 and 6. Edge Golem. Damage Tide. Health Slightly in the favor of the Troopers. Speed, slightly in the favor of the Troopers. Abilities. You can see Spellcaster can't cast Overload. I just qualify an Overload because I try to cast it both in and out of the battle. Nothing happened. And I also went into the wiki and nothing came up. So that is completely disqualified. That leaves Neutral Morale, which is immunity to both positive and negative uh, morale effects. Versus a spell. Damage resistance at 50% and Golem. And cost is 150 to 175. Big edge in the favor of the Golems. Iron Golem. We're going attack 9 to attack 7. Defense 10 to defense 7. Massive in the favor of the Iron Golems. Damage, slightly in the favor of Cyborg. Health, same. Speed, very slightly in the favor of Cyborg. Cost, identical. Abilities, a 7% spell damage resistance and golem versus neutral morale. Big, big victory on the side of the golem. They will beat the shiitake out of the troopers, in my opinion, one on one. Tier 4 The Pekasai versus the Brain Sucker and the Soul Suckers. These guys are the hardest ones to find a match against. How do you find a match against a 
brain-sucking flying worm, or and a soul-sucking flying worm. You don't. I went by a flying and stat. Speaking of stats, we have attack 9, damage 8, or attack 9 of both stats, excuse me. Defense 8 versus uh, defense 9. Very slight as in a favor of the ring suckers. We have damage in the favor of the suckers by 1. Health is the favor of the Pegasi. Speed in the favor of the ring suckers. Cost. It's definitely bigger to pick a side here. Special abilities, magic damper, which causes the enemy to use two more mana per spell they use. First forgetfulness that causes half the enemy stack to not attack you the next turn. And mind spell immunity. As much as I love my Pegasi, I don't see them winning this one. One on one. Silver Pegasi. Attack 9 versus attack 9. Defense 10 versus defense 9. Slight edge Pegasi. Damage, slight edge suckers again. Health, again on the Pegasi side. Pegasi side. <laughs> Speed, slightly in the favor of the Soul Suckers. Abilities, or cost, massively in the favor of the Pegasi. But we're doing one-on-one -on -one fights, so it's not gonna hate help anything. Special abilities is magic damper. You can't see it, but it's definitely there. Which again is two mana per spell, two added mana per spell. There's a whole lineup of abilities here. We have a 35% chance magic resistance, a 100% forgetfulness, a 300 attack, and a mind spell immunity. Goodness gracious, the soul suckers are a whole lot better. Tier 5. Here is the biggest example of the not being able to put everything on the screen at the same time evenly. This looks fugly, but it's just enough to understand what's going on, and the abilities are the same. So, attack 13 versus 15, defense 10 versus 9, small edge to the ledge. Damage is in the favor of the Cannoneers by enough. Health is massively in the favor of the Cannoneers, 50 to 30. Speed is in the favor of the Lich, but that's not going to help in a ranged battle. Special abilities, the only thing the Lich has over the Cannoneers is Death Cloud. While the Cannoneers have Slayer, which is an advantage against Dragons, Behemoths, and Hydras, which is not going to help here. But still, the damage is high on the Kennedyers. They cost less. Big edge on the Kennedyers here. Going down the Power Lich here. Let's just summarize this as majorly winning fight for the Bombardiers. There's nothing the Lich has that outdoes the Bombardiers. But again, Cannon versus Skeleton. What do you expect? Tier 6. Now this one was added for. The Death Knight and Dread Knight versus Sky Brawler and Sky Knight. This is a good fight right here. Attack 16 versus 15. Debet 16 versus 16. Damage 1530 against 1520. Knights so far have the lead here. Speed 7 to 6. Again, a knight. Ability Undead and Curses Enemies. The Curse's Enemies is amazing. For the Sky Brawlers, they have Fly and Neutral Morale, which we already saw before. The cost is a lot more for the uh, for the Death Knight at 300 more. Though, in my opinion, they win this fight soundly. Dread Knight. I love the Dread Knight. I hate and love the Dread at the same time. And it's just a hate love relationship with this guy. Attack 18 versus 15. Defense 18 versus 18. Damage. 15 to 30, which is 20 and 25. Again, night, but not by much overall. That's not really a horrible. It could go either way right there. Health, tied. Speed, lightly in the night by one. Abilities. This is where the night, the dread knight takes the lead by a whole lot. The death blow attack is bonkers. That triggers, it's over. 
for the Sky Knights. But just bye bye. The cost is a lot, little bit more for the Dread Knight. But again, they'll win that fight. Their damage is overall could be higher. Their overall stats are better. Their speed's a bit better. They definitely, with the Curse's enemy and that blow, their supply and morale, yeah, the Knights win that. The big battle, the tier 7. The Angels versus the Juggernaut and Dreadnought. I choose the Angels explicitly because I read on a forum that the Dreadnoughts are explicitly correlated to the BT Archangel. That was their intent when being created by the mod creator. Let's see the action of can or not, shall we? Angel with the Juggernaut. Attack 20. Attack skill 17. Defense 20. Defense skill 17. Damage 50. Versus 35 to 45. Angel across the board. Health 200. Versus 160. Angel again. Cost Juggernaut due to the gold. 1200 less gold. Abilities. The plus of morale is not going to help a one on one fight. And the devil's not going to help a good juggernaut. Kingslayer will not help against the angel, but their generation will. I personally believe that the generation is broken here. I do not think the angel could really beat a juggernaut one on one here. With that regeneration every turn, it's, it's not going to be enough damage. They're going to have to take a long time to hammer the juggernaut with a full other dead. I mean, it, I mean, it would take Dragon out four turns to kill the Angel at the highest five turns. And that is 150 health. I don't... Maybe they can? It, it'd be a toss-up right there, at least in my opinion. And that's gonna have to be done, really, but... Anyway, the Archangel versus the Dreadnought, the big one here. Attack 30 versus attack 28. Defense 30 versus defense 32. Damage 50 versus 35, 45. Archangel across the board. Help, T50 to 25. Again, Archangel. Cost, identical gold with one less health for the Dreadnought, which is three gems for the Archangel. Dreadnought gets that one. Abilities. The Archangel has the King Castro direction. Not gonna help without one. But the Dreadnought has the 25% chance to cast injury. I cannot see what in injury is. Well, the Dreadnought has 50% chance to cast Injury, I don't know what that is. I looked it up again, and I cannot find it. Plus to heal 30. Again, unless something happens to Angel, I don't think they can win this battle. They may be able to. I mean, it would be interesting. I mean, it would take them 4 turns normally to kill... Yeah, it would take about 4 turns to kill normally without healing. That would be 120. It could potentially beat Archangel. That would be a very interesting bite to see. So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna call that a tie, actually. They both actually might be ties. I mean, it's up to you. What do you think? There's some math in there. I'm not gonna do the math right now because I'm tired of talking, so meh, no. <laughs> but yeah, that was this is interesting. Very interesting bite. Time for some final thoughts. The fourth faction is interesting. They can be fun, but I understand why they were voted down by the fandom back in the early 2000s and late 90s. They don't fit this game. Here is my Magic of Fantasy series. It is phoenixes and dragons and unicorns and pegasi and efforts and devils and... Angels, I already said angels, I think, and all these different dwarves and different spirits and, you know, hydras and all that good stuff, right? Guns and bazookas and crab walker things and flying jetpack driven minotaur things don't fit into that fantasy feel. It just doesn't. This, this biological and mechanical city does not fit that, that sensation of heroes, you know? It just, it just isn't right. I'm looking forward to seeing how they operate and how balanced they are and all that good stuff when they come out officially in a feature update, A Wake of Gods, toward the end of this year, early next year. Hopefully then they'll be different. 
a bit more balanced. The city be a little bit different. I love the gloominess. I gotta say, I love the dark, gloomy city feel. It's probably my favorite part. But yeah, that's my final thought.